Hello everyone, I'm your host Bobby C. in for Bob Lee and you're watching Open, the live and interactive program that brings the Bronx and New York City straight to your TV set. Stay connected to us through social media at BronxNet TV, leading things off on October 10th and 11th. The 2019 In My Mind Conference will take place with a theme this year of overcoming barriers and creating opportunities. Joining us with details on what you can expect, we have Ant Antoine Craigwell, founder of Depressed Black Men and Mohan Vinjamore, Assistant Professor of Social Work at Lehman College. Welcome, gentlemen. Good morning. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy Monday morning. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy yeah. Monday. So very exciting, I think, to have this kind of venture. Tell us a little bit about what you do. Well, um, I'm Antoine Craigwell, and again, thank you for having me on the show. Um, I founded DBGM, which is an organization that is concerned about raising awareness of depression affecting black gay men to prevent their suicide. And so the board decided that we need to expand our um, outreach and create this conference, which five years ago we did, um, to include and look at mental health affecting LGBTQ people of color, um, not just in, in, in the Bronx, around New York City, not just the United States, but internationally. And so we bring people in for this conference for that. So why decide to do this? I mean, five years ago, still, still relatively still new, relative, yeah. but on a very important topic these days. Well, the issue of mental health has been around since humans have walked of the earth. Okay, we've always been plagued, always been affected by mental health. But we have to understand that there's a significant amount of shame and stigma that is attached to mental health. Um, but because of racism and homophobia for LGBTQ people of color, there's an added component. So you've got the shame and stigma, and on top of that, is the racism and the homophobia that then plays into as further contributing factors to mental health destabilization in people of color communities. And so you've got sex, you've got sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, all of that playing in. And so this is where this conference comes in now because it has a wider reach. Do you believe it's possible that black men struggle with this more than others do? Well, according to a, a Trevor Project report, that said that um, while four times more LGBT take their lives than their heterosexual counterparts, okay. LGBT people of color take their lives twice more than their white counterparts. So that means that an LGBT person of color will likely take their <laughs> lives six times more than their heterosexual counterparts. So the stats are really showing what's going on with this. You know. Um, so do you believe it's important to have this now, especially here in the Bronx? I mean, how important is this? Well, very important because uh, I'm a professor of social, yeah, of assistant course. professor of social work here at Lehman. And, um, you know, I think one of the things that I speak to my students about, both undergraduate and graduate students who are all training to become social workers, and many of them who are already practicing in the field, is that one of the most powerful weapons of oppression is silence. Of course. And um, in fact, just uh, last week to my undergraduate students in a policy class, we were talking about um, uh, various issues and the, the, first, the first step in addressing any kind of problem is actually seeing the problem, seeing a problem and then naming it, giving it a name. And as Antoine was talking about, I think a part of the Part of the, the, the problem is have, we don't have necessarily a culture that wants to talk about sexual orientation, wants to talk about gender identity, and that's part of, that's part of the heterosexism, part of heterosexist culture is to just kind of assume, like, okay, you know, we're going to assume everybody's heterosexual or everybody is cisgender and, 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 and societal institutions and families and cultural norms, everything is structured around that. So I think talking about it is what is, is the, the first is the first step. And this is the way to get people basically talking, right? To have these kind of panel discussions, and you guys start both of the days off with starting points about what you're talking about for the two the two days. And and it's interesting you should say that because um, this conference started as a one day conference, okay? And at the end of the one day conference, somebody said that there's so much we need to talk about about the mental health for our communities that we need to have this more than one day. I literally grabbed my head. I'm like, are you not serious? So now we, we've morphed into a two-day conference. And 
in terms of its schedule, uh, we have about four, four different session blocks, and each session block is broken and has breakouts of workshops, panel discussions, you know, um, standalone presentation. But Professor Vinjimori here is one of, the, one of the keynote speakers in the conference. So we've got a series of speakers who are spread throughout both days of the conference. Um, we are looking at um, Commissioner Angela, De uh, Angela Fernandez from the New York State D Division of H Human Rights. We've got Joanne Morn from the AIDS Institute. We've got um, uh, the, one of the youngest black mayors, black gay mayors, um, Mayor Mark Barbie from um, Bridgeport, Pennsylvania. Um, we've got Jemani Williams on Friday, the public advocate. Uh, we've got Professor Vinjimori. We've got a 25-year-old young black gay man from Botswana mm -hmm. who was the lead plaintiff in a case that overturned same-sex relationships in the country. The high court ruled in June this year that same sex, that the, the criminalization of same-sex relations in Botswana was unconstitutional. So he's coming, he just got his visa last week, and we are so Incredible excited. Lineup, huh? Exactly. Huh? And he's coming. Um, we were talking earlier that there is the James Baird Foundation is doing a workshop presentation on food and mental health. How does food affect our mental health? We've got two lawyers, a former prosecutor and a defense counsel, who are talking about LGBTQ people of color and their interaction or their, their, their relationship and with the criminal justice system in New York City that we find and we, we need to remember the young trans Latina who, was, who died in Rikers Island uh, um, um, I think about a month ago or, okay. um, or thereabout. So we've got a lot of LGBT people of color who are struggling with significant issues and this conference is helping us do that. But more importantly I think is to recognize that it's our fifth anniversary. And if you think, if you look at the four words, overcoming barriers and creating opportunities, mm -hmm. there's just not a four words for resilience, which each of us possess, mm -hmm. the ability to rebound and to continue. So in closing, message that you would like to send and then again, send it home with this event that you have coming up when it is and where people can find you. Well, I think the message that uh, I would like to send, and this is what actually I'll be talking about at the conference, is, is many times I think people who've been oppressed and marginalized within their own families, within religious institutions, schools, and within society, one of the messages that they've been told, young people, older people, is that you don't have a future. You don't deserve a future. And that really can destroy a person's mental health in terms of so I think one of the things that I'll be speaking about is how do we as social workers as educators as researchers how do we really help people to envision their future in this world and that part of that is to talk about t removing some of the stigma and shame around talking about mental health and addressing mental health getting the conversation started getting the conversation started and helping people to realize that you deserve a future and you deserve to envision your future closing remarks and I'm thinking that I will just piggy and jump on what uh, Professor Vinjimori is saying is that it's continuing the conversation because the conversations in yes. some respects have already started but it's to continue the conversation we want to say to anyone who's coming to this conference this is a safe space. Mm -hmm. You're welcome here. Whether you're LGBT or not, whether you're a person of color or not, because we recognize that the issues that you deal with in your life need to be heard, you need to heal from it, and you're welcome to attend the conference. Mm -hmm. Thank you, gentlemen. Great stuff today. Thank October you. 10th, 11th, the new school, NYC. Yes. We have to take a quick break, but stay tuned. We'll be right back with more Open after this.